something a little bit uh, like wetlands. So how, Abby, how would you have protected the, what, this is a direct question to you, how would you have protected the wetlands and wildlife Chico Corridor different than Josh? Well, I think that um, what we're seeing on a lot of issues, like I was saying with the gun range and some of these other neighborhood issues, is that the Department of Community Development is not applying these regulations the same for everyone. I don't think it's intentional. I don't think that they're going in and they're, you know, necessarily choosing which projects they like and which projects they don't. But what I think is happening is on projects like the Chico Creek Water Basin, there was an unidentified wetland that was there. There's been a lot of restoration efforts on that creek. Um, and I think that we, what we need to do is really work with the property owner. Something that, that the neighbors showed me is that there's a south side exit that they could have taken that would have had less impact on the environment. And I think we need to start working more with them, with the neighbors and with the property owners to see how we can achieve that, that balance for everyone. I think, I think sometimes what's happening is that because of the inconsistencies, we're losing out. Because the department isn't clear on their guidelines. There was a study done a while back, Steve Bauer did it, that said that the employees in DCD didn't understand what the specific guidelines were. I think if they were more clear, these situations wouldn't happen. So. Thank you. And Josh, how did you protect the wetlands and the wildlife well, Chico corridor? I mean, let's get something straight. I, I, I've heard this a couple times about our, planner, our, our planners in DCD uh, not treating everybody the same. That is just a flat lie. If you want to attack the integrity of the people in our planning department, they go to work every day trying to make the right decision, and it's a challenging job. But if, if you want to be specific about calling people out, I hope you, you are specific instead of just relying on generalities. I've worked really hard to help protect the Chico Basin. How have we done that? Two major ways. Number one, we've moved forward with the Newberry Hill Heritage Park. That is a land swap with the state of Washington that we're completing. It has no direct cost to the county. It's property that isn't on the tax rolls currently. It's simply going to be transferred to the county and it's going to help us preserve a thousand acres of critical open space in the north portion of, of the watershed. Number two, we have worked collaboratively getting grants to help restore Chico Creek. We've, we're working on removing the culverts on, on uh, Country Club Drive and Kitty Hawk and we've done a lot of floodplain restoration work. Thank you. Now we actually have a, a, a solution focused question from one of our audience members today. Question is, why not consider working with the sheriff to have prisoners or trustees fill in as low skilled county jobs become available? Josh? Um, <laughs> what do you think of that idea, Sheriff? <laughs> Here, I... It's your day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I guess, you know, we'd have to look at it. Um, you know, certainly uh, we do have uh, inmate labor do some things. Uh, there are some things that would be appropriate to look at, other things that wouldn't be. Um, and, and really, I would, trust, I would trust, you know, the judgment of uh, our sheriff who has direct oversight for the county jail in terms of what would be appropriate or not. And I, and I think we've, we've tried to do things that are appropriate, but I think we also know um, that um, and certainly I wouldn't feel comfortable if I was coming into the auditor's office to get a license and the person greeting me to, uh, to report my, my property deed was, was somebody who um, was working part-time out of the county jail. So there's some things that are appropriate, some things that wouldn't be. And, um, you know, and I think it's you know, generally the case that you know, inmate labor has been used for cleaning up garbage and you know, th th things that are more manual, pu more public works, minor issues that come up. So. If people have some other great ideas from somewhere, I guess I'd love to hear it. So, maybe some other jurisdictions are doing some. Well, I think you're going to have to get creative as, as you know the, the budget cr crunch comes about. But I, I think that I, I agree with Josh on that one. I, I think as I've talked to people in the auditor's office, you know they're trying to work with people in the assessor's office and some of the other offices where it's similar, you know where there's similar positions where they can help each other out when some of them are more busy and, uh, and the other offices are less busy. I think we can work in, in that arena. But as far as you know, going that far, I'm not sure that that would work well. But I think that it's always good to have suggestions, and that people are going to have to continue to come up with those solutions as the budget gets tighter and tighter. So, okay. thank you. All right, and now for a little bit more of a challenging question, and starting with you, Abby, 
as if none of these questions have been challenging, right? <laughs> Would you vote for an election of a board of freeholders to draw up a Kitsap County charter or would you support collection of signatures for an election of a board of freeholders to establish a city and county government for Kitsa? That is a challenging question. I've talked with a few people about that briefly. Um, it sounds like it's a, a decent idea. I think I need to look into it more closely. I'm just going to be honest about it. I haven't got a ton of knowledge about that, but I, I think it's a possibility. I'm just going <laughs> to... Anybody that wants to talk to me about that afterwards and have the question, I'd be happy to do so. Thank you. I think I can guess who asked that question. Because yeah. <laughs> I remember a similar question being asked four years ago. Uh, and, and it was a charter for a joint city county government. Uh, it was, uh, is it city and government? Yes. Okay. So, so there's, a couple, um, there's a couple different ways that a county can go through a charter process. I, I'm not supportive at this time of, of a charter process for just the county government. Uh, you know, one of the things that's been raised is if the residents of a place like Silverdale would like to have greater local control, um, but at the same time, don't want to duplicate uh, a lot of the services that the county is currently providing, such as public works, the sheriff's office, that you could form some type of joint uh, city-county government. Um, that hasn't been done in Washington State, and I'm not quite sure the last time something like that has been looked at. I'm not sure if Clark or Spokane County could. But if, if it was something that was being discussed in the context of an option instead or, or, in, a, or in lieu of incorporating Silverdale, that might be something really worth looking at. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Josh. And now the question is, since we can't judge your fiscal qualifications and how you would spend our money, would you release your credit scores? Um, well, I. I guess number one, I think you can judge the decisions that I've made as commissioner. Um, you know, we've, we've cut a lot from the county's budget. We've done so in a collaborative way. Um, we've done so without uh, going out and, and raising new taxes. So I, I, I hope folks can, can judge me by the, the, the decisions that I've made. And I, and I really feel that I've managed the county in a fiscally responsible way. Um, I've never been asked for somebody to take a look at my credit score. Um, you know, I guess I, at this time I don't know how I feel about that. I, I don't have a good credit score, so I guess I wouldn't be adverse to it, but I, I'm not sure that that's something that, you know, it's kind of like asking for your high school GPA, I, I guess. So don't know. Thank you. Well, I, I kind of feel the same way as Josh does. I mean, I, I, it's sort of the same process. I don't know how I feel about it either. I haven't had people ask me for personal documents like that yet. Um, I have had some, someone suggest they wanted my college transcript. I don't have a problem with that. Um, but anybody who wants to talk to me about it afterwards, once again, I'd be happy to, to talk with you about it further. Um, as far as my qualifications on you know, fiscal matters, I, I do like people to know that I have done more than you know, just go to college. I mean, I, I built a $325,000 house. I've helped my grand and grandma manage her mobile park for quite some time. I do have some knowledge on fiscal issues. I mean, I helped my old boss run his barber shop for you know, a little while while I'm getting heart surgery. And I think that I haven't just done the whole the college thing, and I think people should know that. And I think that they should be aware of the fact that even though I haven't drawn up budgets, working with those budgets at Washington Policy Center is much more labor intensive than you would realize. So that's the fiscal qualifications I think that I have. Thank you. Okay, so the next question is right here. When the county commissioners were in the litigation loop on land use decisions, those hearings in many ways were the last opportunity for people of limited means to have an affordable venue to redress their grievances. If elected, would you work to reinstate commissioners in the role? If no, why not? Yes, I would. I, I was very unhappy with set to see the commissioners pull themselves out of the land use appeals process. Um, when I started talking with the people with the Chico Creek Water Basin issue, that was the first thing that I came to them and talked to them about because I, I wanted to make sure that even if we couldn't agree on maybe how the, the land deal with Hewland was going, we could agree on that because I think that the way in which it was done was unfair to the people that had lawsuits pending at that time or who were going through the hearing examiner and wanted the county commissioners to hear those decisions. 
um, to make those decisions. And I think what we're seeing now is the county commissioners are saying, well, we're open to the public to discuss these things, but why would you want to go discuss them if they can't have any effect on that? And so I think what we need to, to do is make sure that the county commissioners are, are doing that part of the job. That was something that they all signed up to do. Uh, if they felt that they couldn't do that, I think the public should have known that, and maybe we should have taken a little bit more structured approach to pulling out of that process so that on this date we were done and we didn't accept any more applications. Thank you. Well, I voted to make the change, and the reason why I did so is because I saw over the, uh, the three years serving as county commissioner at the appeals that come before us, that the vast majority of them, there was no rationale to, to make a decision to, to overturn the hearing examiner or significantly modify the hearing examiner's decision. There's an extremely high threshold for the county commissioners if we were over appealing a decision. And quite honestly, what I was seeing more and more of is the appeals process being used to help stall projects. And, and seeing folks that were trying to get projects through the permitting process that were appropriate, that were legal, that the hearing examiner signed up, signed off on with conditions, sometimes very extensive conditions, and then these projects being dragged out over many months, delaying the projects, and providing uncertainty. Um, if I felt that it made me more effective as a county commissioner to hear these appeals, uh, I would. And by the way, the county could, if we wanted, we could serve as a hearing examiner. And that was a change that was made many years ago for the right reasons, and I think this changes for the right reasons too. Thank you. <coughs> 